In this story, the Bodhisattva is reborn as a beautiful golden goose. He has a following of 80,000 geese, and they roam around the mountains near Chittakutta. Sometimes they swoop down to lakes and streams and eat the wild rice there, and then sometimes they just perch in their home. One day, the king, the Bodhisattva, decides he'd, li he'd like to visit India more generally. So he takes his flock with him and they fly over Benares just to have a look at it. The people of Benares looked up and it was like a great golden mat had been unfurled in the sky. The king saw this and he saw the leader and he thought, this goose must be a great king like me. How he commands that great flock of geese. I think I'd like to meet him. So he takes flowers, garlands and ointments to see the goose and he has musical instruments played around so that the geese can enjoy them. Now, the king of the geese asks his friends, why does the human king want to pay homage to me? They think about it and they say, I think he just wants to be your friend. Okay, so he accepts that. And then the next day, when the human king was in his leisure garden, the golden goose comes to visit him. In one wing he has water, and in another sandalwood powder. And he soars around above the king and drops the powder and the water on the king's head, so he's sprinkled. The king is delighted. Please come back, dear golden goose. I really want to be your friend. Now, as it happens, there were two goslings who were very ambitious and rather proud. They decided one day that they'd like to have a race with the sun. So they asked their king whether they could do so, and he said no. And they asked him a second time, and he said no. And they asked him a third time, and he said no. But they really wanted to do this. So secretly they went up to Mount Ugandara nearby and sat and perched and waited for the dawn so that they could race with the sun. Now their king noticed they weren't there and he thought, I think I know what they've been up to. And he too goes up to the mountain and waits for the dawn with them. So intent are they that they start flying and they start trying to race the sun. Now, they actually managed to keep going for quite a while, but after a while, one of them starts to feel his joints becoming like fire, and he says, I can't go on. And the Bodhisattva, privately thinking, well, I knew this would happen, takes him in the furl of his wing and takes him back to the mountain of Gandhara. The other one flies further, but it's getting near noon, and the sun starts to get very hot and he too starts to feel fire in his joints and the Bodhisattva knows that he will die, he continues. So he goes and rescues him and he picks him up and furls him in his wing and brings him back to Mount Ugandara. Once he's left the birds there, he looks at the sun and they're now safe, the, the young goslings, and he thinks, actually that's rather an interesting idea. I'd quite like to race with the sun. So he does, and he encircles the whole world, just sometimes behind the sun, sometimes ahead of it, but he always manages to keep up with it. But when he's finished, he thinks, well, that was a bit stupid. I was really just showing off to myself. I think I should do something a bit more satisfactory. I will go and see my friend the king instead and I will discuss the Dhamma, the teaching, with him. So he goes to see the king, and the king has heard about everything he's done and that he has followed the sun. And he says, this is extraordinary. You're such a swift, amazingly quick bird. Could you give me an exercise of your skill? And the golden goose says, yes, I will do. I want you to have four archers 
who sends arrows in the four directions. And I will pick each one of those arrows up before it reaches the ground. So the king orders four archers to do this. And indeed, the goose is so quick he can catch each one of the arrows before it falls right to the ground. When he comes back, the king is so impressed. He says, you must be the most rapid creature on earth. Is there anything in the whole world that is faster than you? The golden goose says, yes, there is. Matter itself and the material constituents of beings, they come into being and pass away far quicker than anything I could try to do myself. The king is so shocked to hear this, that everything around him is impermanent and changing more quickly than even this fast bird, that he collapses into a faint. The golden goose revives him with water and consoles him and says, this has shocked you, hasn't it? But don't worry, if you're mindful, if you follow the teaching, if you do what you should, and if you behave properly, you will be reborn in the heaven. And the speed of the matter degenerating will not matter. You will be at peace. The king took this advice seriously and he said, My dear friend, the goose, you have helped me so much. I would like you to stay in my palace always so I can chat to you and ask you questions whenever I want. But the goose said, We're friends now and I will always be your friend. But if I'm around, you might start to see me in a different light. You might start even to want to eat me because my flesh is so plump and good. So I think it's better if I just go away. Oh, please don't go, said the king. Yes, birds live in the sky. You live in your palace. I'll come and visit you. I won't say when, but just wait around and I will come and see you again. So at the end of the story, the bird flies off and the king is left happy and content because he's been shown the path by the bird, but always hoping that one day the golden bird will return and bring him happiness in his friendship and in his companionship with the king. <laughs>